immediately this house began to make itself known. I mean, this house would do things that no normal old house does. That was the moment that I knew that house was very haunted. We weren't the crazy ones. There's something there. My ghost story began when my wife Leslie and I purchased the Tilly Pierce house in Gettysburg. It's named for Matilda Tilly Pierce, who was its resident at the time. And that's fairly common for Gettysburg houses to be named for their owners during the Civil War. I've lived my entire life, for the most part, in 19th century houses. For all those years that I lived in very old houses, I had no experiences that could possibly be explained as paranormal. But immediately, this house began to make itself known. I mean, this house would do things that no normal old house does. We began to notice as we moved in, footsteps. We'd hear footsteps from the second floor, heavy boots. I have experienced on a number of occasions moans, muffled voices from the second floor, the feel of someone brushing past you in the hallway. It began to make me a little bit nervous. I became aware of it. The house itself was built in 1829. Tilly was 15 years old at the time of the battle in 1863 and lived there with her parents. Her father was a butcher. The sister of Tilly, Maggie, died in the house of typhoid, which is a miserable, miserable disease. So it's a very traumatic death. We've had a number of guests who have seen the same little girl in a white dressing gown, and she's been seen upstairs in the hallways. Our thought is that the little girl might be Maggie. I first met Keith and Leslie when I started working at the Tilly Pierce house. I've been working for them for four years. My job is to clean the bed and breakfast. I first started to notice that there was something going on that was strange in the house. I would grab all the linens, run downstairs, throw them in the wash, come back upstairs, and all the doors would be shut and locked. So I would go back downstairs, grab the maid's keys, come back upstairs, unlock all the doors, grab all the towels, go back downstairs, come back upstairs, all of the doors shut and locked again. At first, I thought it was Keith and Leslie. She initially thought that maybe we were pranking her, that maybe it was just another little running joke. I said, no, I, I swear we've not done it. It was very eerie. Sometimes candles will blow out by themselves. Footsteps come down the hall and beds get unmade. The second big occurrence was definitely when we heard this huge banging coming from upstairs. Keith and I darted up the steps and looked around. There was nothing out of place. Not a pillow had been moved. But the three of us heard it. There was no mistaking of that. On one occasion, we're standing on the landing on the second floor, and I see Ashley noticeably flinch. And I can actually see her hair being stroked and taken up, as if they're actually pulling it out to the side. It'll feel like something is kind of like running its fingers through your hair, and your hair will actually just kind of like stand up. And as soon as like you yourself try to touch it, it'll lay flat, like nothing was ever going on. There is no one near her. There's no explanation for that. I was so frightened by it that I never wear my hair down in the house. Like, I don't want to be messed with. I don't want to invite things to touch me. Many of our female guests with long hair have reported the same issues. And I've seen it happen to other guests as well. We had a guest who set up a camera in the second floor hallway. It's about 3 o'clock in the morning. He heard a noise. He opened his door. Well, as he does, the orb goes past the camera, down the hallway, does a complete about face, and goes back down the hallway and past the camera. It was the first thing that we actually caught on tape to say that we weren't the crazy ones, that there actually, there's something there. One night, I was sitting in the parlor, and the TV is in a cabinet and the cabinet has two doors that can swing shut. I was typing on my laptop. All of a sudden, I look up, and the doors slam shut. It was so overwhelming to me. I heard her running up the stairs, and from the look in her eyes, I could see that she was quite startled by it. That was the moment that I knew that house was very haunted. When you're really hit by something that has absolutely no potential logical explanation, those are the ones that really affect you. 
there's a hallway just outside the kitchen, and in that hallway is a carpet runner. It's about 30 inches wide, about 10 feet long. Suddenly, the carpet runner, as if someone has taken it and pulled it, slides two to three feet across the floor and actually bunches up in almost an accordion style. My dog, who has the ability to move the carpet runner, is within sight. I can see him in the parlor with his back to me. There is no one else in the house. Because stuff like this started happening, we started offering our guests ghost stories in the attic. One time, I just got this horrible, uneasy feeling. When you get knots in your stomach and a cold chill, like, they're not for no reason. And from the corner of her eye, she saw what appeared to be a shadow figure. So I kind of like wrapped up the ghost stories rather quickly. Everybody files down the steps. Well, the woman that was in front of me, I hear the words, get out. And I see her fall down three steps like she was being shoved. It appeared that it actually impacted her, that it actually collided with her from behind. I was horribly frightened. Something maliciously shoved her. It wasn't a nice entity. It startled me a bit because this is one of the more malevolent things we've heard about, that it frightened this woman. You know, she felt it. She refused to have any contact with us after that because she was so frightened. When I'm alone, often there are times that I feel that I'm not truly alone, that I'm being observed, that someone is learning from my actions, is learning to do things like lock modern-day doors or turn on modern-day water faucets. Whatever there is there seems to be um, intelligent. They want to show you that they understand technology, and that's unnerving. When I saw the video with the orb, I knew that all these things that we had been experiencing were actually real. I'm now convinced, came in a skeptic, going out a believer. After working at the Tilly Pierce house, I do now believe in ghosts. The house will give you a show if you taunt it and don't believe. If you're a skeptic, something will happen to you. There's no doubt about it. I think it's quite possible that Maggie and Tilly will haunt the house for as long as it stands. But I realize that it's a question that we can't answer ourselves. The house does have a life of its own. It's not just any house. It's very, very different. and something I need to be very aware of.